Hello my friends, I'm back covering more forgotten and underappreciated Hidden Gem VR games. All the games on this list I think are pretty special and really stand out from the crowd. Let's get started with the newest game on this list, which is Ven VR Adventure. It recently came out this year and I'm quite surprised that I haven't seen more coverage about it. It's a straightforward obstacle course platforming game, featuring a really gorgeous visual design and enjoyable soundscape as well. You control Ven with your motion controllers like a gamepad. As Ven moves through each level, the camera slides forward to follow him. The movement and attacking mechanics are simple. There's jump, double jump, attack, and ground pound. That's all the controls, but even though the mechanics are limited, the later levels still become very challenging as the timing gets trickier and enemies become more advanced. I'm getting totally destroyed in the second to last level, so the challenge is really there. And the game provides a decent length of gameplay as well, since it took me 6 hours of play to get to this point. When I first started playing, I was wondering why you can't play with a gamepad, and that's because during the boss fights you'll be using your hands as well, like to throw objects or swing swords. But those moments are pretty rare. It's an impressive VR platformer that I found really challenging and enjoyable. The price is $30. Ragnarok is a solo and multiplayer VR rhythm game in which you play a viking captain competing in a ship race. With your two hammers, pound the incoming runes and in sync with viking music. And it's the soundtrack that really makes this game great. Most rhythm games these days feature EDM music, and with this being a viking music game, it provides a refreshingly unique rhythm experience that's really addictive. If you hit enough perfect notes, you'll build up energy, and once your hammers light up with energy, you can hit the gongs on the sides, which will inspire your crew and boost your rowing speed to get ahead in the race. There's a lot of tracks to choose from, each with different speed settings. For a fun rhythm game, it's a nice change from the usual EDM offerings, I recommend it. The price is $20. Operation Warcade came out a very long time ago. It's an oldie, but still a goodie, for some simple and outlandish arcade action. In the beginning, you start out in a virtual arcade with two arcades in front of you. The one on the right will play like a typical arcade game with you shooting the screen. That's cool, but the left arcade machine is the good stuff. In this one, you're facing a massive arcade screen in which you can turn and look around the corner at a tiny virtual arcade world in front of you. It plays like a classic side-scrolling shooter, with tiny army men charging forward and attacking you. On occasion, you'll hit a power-up that will take you truly inside the game world. With everything becoming life-sized and action all around you. After a bit of that, you're back to the front-facing arcade mode. This is action-packed, and it stays fresh with all kinds of different levels and ways in which you're immersed in the game. Before you know it, you'll be driving a truck, piloting a fighter jet, or experiencing new weapons. It's a side-scrolling shooter cranked up to 11. When I was revisiting Operation Warcade for this video, I was surprised at how well it has aged. Almost four years have passed since I first played it, and I still found myself really enjoying the casual and yet very dynamic action in here. 
If you're a fan of old school arcade shooters, then I think you'll really enjoy it. The regular price is $20, and there's a free demo. I've tried paid Salvador Dali experiences before, but Dreams of Dali is a free experience that's better than all of them. And one of the best free artwork VR journeys out there. It's a little short, but really beautiful and not an experience to be missed. Unfortunately, Windows Mixed Reality is not supported. Most of the museums that you'll find in VR are just short demos or small samplers. But with Versailles VR The Palace Is Yours, you get to explore the entirety of the Palace of Versailles. I find the scope and quality of this to be really impressive, and I'm rather surprised that people don't seem to talk about it, especially since it's free. There's a ton of fascinating art and architecture to see in here. It's all reconstructed from photogrammetry, so the artwork feels authentic. The default quality setting is low, so be sure to turn that up. In every room, there are multiple items that you can highlight to get the details on. Even the artwork on the ceiling can be highlighted. Within this view, you get a detailed description on your left hand about the piece. You can turn on the audio guide, which will narrate what each room is for, but they don't narrate each individual piece. The bedchamber is the most important room in the Queen's State Apartments and was where the Sovereign spent most of her time. There's a night mode that will change the ambience and make the fireplaces light up. And you can enable 3D chandeliers for a little more immersion. I'm so happy to finally see a full and complete museum in VR. I highly recommend it. The Coronation Chamber owes its name to the emblematic monumental painting of the Coronation of Napoleon. You may recall that I featured Final Assault in one of my top 10 videos in 2019, but I recently discovered this game got a massive permanent price drop, so I thought it was worth revisiting. Out of all of the RTS games I've played in VR, this is my favorite one. It's incredibly well put together with a fun, lighthearted atmosphere and engaging strategy. There's no building of structures, each player is granted one command center that makes all of the units. And the first player to have their defense towers breached and command center destroyed loses the game. Can't stand losing, so I'm glad you made sure we did. That's good work, Commander. But even though there's no structures to be built, there's still lots of managing and strategy to be found in the combat itself. One of the first things I noticed about the game is that you actually do command individual units, which I found incredibly rare in VR strategy games. Your command center steadily deploys a bare minimum of troops that march toward the enemy base. But you obviously need more than that. So on one hand, you have a menu of units at your disposal, with the simple units on the bottom and the advanced units on the top. And to get access to the advanced units, you need to unlock those tiers with some cash. Grab a unit, and then decide where in the battlefield they should start out. You can then order the unit to move around or attack a specific enemy. And the combat mechanics feature the usual rock-paper-scissors dynamic. Planes are best against infantry, rockets are best against tanks, etc. One of the most fun elements are the airplanes. It reminded me of the old Final Approach game where you can trace out exactly where they should fly. And if you trace a path on the ground, that's where the planes will strafe attack. There's multiple generals to choose from, each with unique units and abilities. There's both single-player campaigns and multiplayer. When I first reviewed this game almost two years ago, it was $30, but it now has a regular price of $10. And for that price, I think it's an absolute bargain. Relativity is a puzzle platformer that will turn your world upside down. Gravity is relative here, as you'll be traveling all over the place, walking on walls and ceilings. It's a series of puzzle challenge levels. 
there's some physical challenges like dodging lasers, and when you first begin to shift gravity by moving along these curved surfaces, it is a little disorienting, but you do get used to it. And yes, there's both sliding movement and teleporting movement. Although I should note that using the Reverb G2, I couldn't get sliding to work, only teleporting. Of course you need to look past the dated graphics, but once you do that, I think you'll have a great time, because there's a lot of fun puzzling to be found in here. At first the puzzling is pretty simple, like turning a wheel to lower a bridge to access a new area, but new mechanics and new challenges keep showing up and changing up the gameplay. There's both easy difficulty and hard difficulty. On easy difficulty, the enemies are less aggressive. More specifically, here you can see these bug-like creatures crawling on the ground. On hard difficulty, they would be jumping on your face, which I hate. So personally, I choose easy difficulty. If you don't mind things jumping on your face, you can choose hard difficulty. I estimate two to three hours to beat all the levels. So for the price of two dollars, it's a fantastic value. If you enjoy unique puzzle games, it's a must-play and a real hidden gem. Waddle Home is a delightful little puzzle game that's full of charm. Evil robots have imprisoned your space penguins, so you need to get your space penguins to their UFO for safe travels. Everything is executed in this game via bopping. You bop the prison to release the penguins, you bop the penguins themselves to make them go faster, and you bop obstacles to make them go up or down into the ground. When penguins hit a wall, they always turn right. When robots hit a wall, they always turn left. And if a robot happens to reach a penguin, they're sent back to prison. Back to, the cage, back to, the cage, to beat each level, get all of your penguins into the UFO, but you get bonus points by collecting special eggs throughout the level for an extra challenge. Whee! The Steam page doesn't list Windows Mixed Reality support, but it played fine on my Reverb G2. Like instead of pressing the trackpad to release the penguins, you press buttons instead. Everything in this game is highly polished. It's full of charm and personality, with fun, brightly colored visuals and great sound design as well. It's a fantastic puzzle game the whole family can enjoy. And best of all, it's just five bucks. Well, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe. See ya!